Hi, I've got this wanky looking uh, second-hand TP-Link AX6000 uh, router. It's got eight ports on it. It's uh, pretty beasty. Let's have a look. It's got eight uh, gigabit Ethernet uh, ports. It's got a 2.5 gig. It's got USB uh, 3 and USB-C as well. Very handy. Um, it's got a wanky uh, LED light-up thing that spins around on the top. It's actually connected uh, to the interwebs at the moment, so it's uh, solid. Anyway, I got this uh, cheap. This will be an upgrade um, to get some extra range. Look at all these wanky antennas on it. Jeez, look at this. So apparently it's got, um, I don't know, oh, new super whiz-bang speed technology. All the gamer kiddies uh, will know all about it. I know, Jack, all about it. But apparently it can do uh, beamforming and stuff. So wherever your device is that's physically connected, it'll sort of like kind of sort of beamform in that direction or something like that. Anyway, um, it's, it's got all these whiz-bang antennas. So we'll do a very quick teardown. One of the interesting things is that it didn't actually come with a plug pack and uh, I had trouble finding a 12 volt 4 amp uh, minimum plug pack on here. Um, so that's 48 watts. Why does a Wi-Fi router need 48 watts. That just seems like insane. So I thought I'd do a quick uh, power consumption measurement and I'm getting uh, 12 watts there, um, near enough. Uh, just at idle when it's actually connected. You know, I've got my shoe phone actually connected to it. When I was running uh, speedtester.net, that went up to just a smidge under uh, 15 watts there. And I think maybe I brief... Oh, there we go. It just jumped to 15. I don't know if you saw that. So it has these little spikes and I think I saw... Yeah, 13. There you go. I think I saw it actually go up to uh, 19 at one point, but I don't know how this would draw 48 watts. So I don't know, they need it for peak current or something. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I did eventually uh, find one, but uh, yeah, it, it took some effort. So anyway, let's do a quick teardown. Well, there's the first teardown. <laughs> there's the wanky LEDs um, under the little uh, light pipey thing here, the logo on top. So they've just got that as a translucent brick there, sort of acts as kind of like a light spreader, light pipey, uh, not quite a light pipey, but just as a uh, spreader. So it gives you a nice big even, even though there's not many LEDs in there, there's only like four aside, it does give you like a really good, like uh, solid sort of like flow around effect. So that's pretty neat. Um, they've just got a LED driver, I can't read that, but uh, there you go. Got a couple of SO jobbies on the bottom side as well, and a little ribbon cable. Looks like we're going to have to get that out because I think the whole front cover lifts off. And it's a real dog to get in there on these uh, corners, but you're supposed to get in there. I think you're supposed to lift the four corners off, and this top cover is going to lift off, I think. And here we go. I think I got it. Sorry about the expo camera exposure, but when you have black... Oh, thing popped back in. Bastard. There we go. Got it. Yeah, um, black causes havoc. With the cameras. Oh, there you go. Wow. Yeah, um, this is a power hog, all right. Look at the size of those heat sinks. Uh, there's no fan in the thing, so it requires, you know, this is relying on uh, just the uh, vents on the side, really. But unless you've got, like, airflow, uh, you know, air cons on and there's movement going around, then, uh, yeah, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, two absolutely giant processors. There you go. Uh, there's a Broadcom jobby over there that's you can see flux around it so it had a little repair maybe i can see some uh <laughs> i can see uh rossman loads of flux on there anyway a couple of things that are completely unpopulated over here and bloody black solder mask on the pcb as well anyway um so all the uh, little coax is all running off uh, to the antennas here so yeah little uh, ufl connectors Oop, down on the board there Nice. Can you read what that silver puppy down there is? I'm not sure, but anyway, got a whole bunch of uh, transformers along here. So they'd be handling uh, two channels each. And that one there would be for the uh, 2.5 gig internet input on the thing. But apart from that, um, geez, I, I don't know. Do I have to get the board out? I'd love to show you under the heat sinks, but um, I... <laughs> It is now currently, uh, I think it's almost like uh, 10 o'clock at night and uh, i got to get home and uh, take this home and plug it in. I thought uh, we might be able to see something more interesting than that. A couple of little uh, 
programming headers over there, have we, or something? Anyway, I do really like the uh, RFI cans they've got over the USB connectors there. They're really uh, serious about this. And the uh, little mini coax there, it's been held in with a little clip. I mean, this one's <laughs> going through the going through the heatsink there, so that's a bit how you're doing, but it keeps them in place. So, and that one there as well. So, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Not much in the way of uh, power supply at all. Just got a couple of uh, filter caps there. I thought that might have been a polyfuse for a second, but it's not. It looks like it's a um, Y-class uh, cap, RFI uh, cap in there, which is uh, going over to uh, the metal can. There you go. I managed to do undo a couple of uh, coaxes. Aha! There is some switching converters. There you go. No worries, you can dead giveaway, of course. You got your inductor there and a whole bunch of uh, parallel caps there. Oh, I love how they got the silk screen for all of these tiny little, oh my God, are they 0201s? They're absolutely tiny, Tot. Those bypass caps, oh, that's horrific. <laughs> so I've obviously got two very dense BGAs under there. Uh, looks like there's our oscillator down there. Yeah, you can tell that, that's a PLL in there. And we've got some memory, that'd be the, uh, that'd be the flash, wouldn't it? And we've got a very nice shielded can, which looks to be soldered down. So I'm not getting that off. Um, and then a whole bunch of miscellaneous uh, power supply stuff there. And uh, yeah, more over there for the uh, USB uh, stuff. And just threw all stuff down the bottom. So there you go. Um, and it's interesting to note that the... Uh, heatsink is on top of the metal can, so it may not be, I don't know if that metal can's actually just a shield like around the outside of the die and the heatsink's directly on the die, because it'd be pretty poor to go through, you know, to have this sort of heatsink in with like a, a couple of extra layers in there to get the heat through. Um, so yeah, maybe it's just metal around the outside of that, but I won't know unless I got that uh, heatsink off. Sorry, ain't going there. I wonder if this thing's uh, expensive. There's a lot of, uh, it's going to be lots of really expensive uh, high speed uh, custom silicon inside this jobby. But uh, anyway, if you do know the chips used in there, leave it in the comments uh, down below. You know, I could like take off the heat sinks, but nah, I need to finish this up now. So I'll put it back together and there you go. Um, Bob's your uncle. That's the uh, TP Link. AX6000, let us know in the comments down below. I know there's uh, haters out there and they'll go, oh, this is a piece of shit. Others will go, oh, it's fantastic. All the gamer kiddies will love it. And um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I got it for a Nix. Um, and it seems to work just fine. So yeah, catch you next time. Oh, and they have designed the uh, standoffs in the plastic so that it only goes on one direction. Uh, nice attention to detail when you're uh, doing your moulding. Someone was thinking. Uh, the industrial designer who did the moulding was uh, uh, talking to the PCB designer and the system designer. Nice.